The second lesson we wish to speak of is the role of students. Students, of course, have a role in any society, capitalist society, social society, and their role is to institutionalize the values of the given society. Conscious, of course, in a capitalist system, this should be done unconsciously. But students are the spark of revolution. Of course, we make a difference here between revolution and reform. Those who want reform seek to work, I guess, from the top down. Those of us who understand fundamental changes know it must come from the bottom up. The students, of course, always work at the point of ideas in a society. Their job is to acquire knowledge, and of course, this knowledge which they acquired is geared by an ideology which tells them what to do with it. So if you're a doctor, instead of curing cancer, you should turn a man to a woman to get money even though she can't make babies. <laughs> that was life. Students, we say, at the point of ideas and the point of values. When one speaks of revolution, one speaks of overturning the values of a given society. If one is not speaking of overturning the values, then one speaks of reform. Thus, one can join the Democratic Party. We're not here to overturn its value. But certainly, if one is here for revolution, and one is here for people's liberation, one would know that a corrupt instrument can never lead a people to liberation at all. Students then, we say, come to question the values of a society. Of course, in relationship to the values, students, just like anyone in any society, have but two alternatives. Either they accept the values or they reject the values. It's as simple as that. Of course, if they reject the values, they have a responsibility to find alternative values. But either you accept cheating as a student or you reject it. It's as simple as that. Either you accept any value in a society or you reject it. Students, once having rejected a society, bringing together their ideas and their energies and strength to work against these values connected with the masses always give us revolution. Thus, from the 60s, while a reform movement, we were able to see that students, joined with the masses of the people, came to bring a lot of changes to the country. Thus, we must not confuse ourselves. The job of students is clear here. Their job is to spark revolution. Students cannot carry revolution through to the end. The final triumph of revolution must be carried through to the end by the masses, the workers and the peasants. But students play a crucial role. We say they spark revolution. Certainly, if we did not recognize this, the enemy did. The FBI, before the 60s, did not have informers on college campus. After the 60s, they put an informer on every college campus in the country. Their job was simple, stop any activity at all that runs against the status quo. We say it's a mobilized people who can allow this, because when you're mobilized and fight like an animal, after you get tired and you wind down, then the enemy comes back stronger than he did before. Students spark revolution, and we must work everywhere to have students live up to their responsibility of sparking revolution. Here, of course, it calls for the students properly understanding the role of knowledge. Knowledge has but one purpose. Its purpose is to alleviate the sufferings of humanity. Knowledge has but one purpose. Its purpose is to alleviate the sufferings of humanity. Capitalism is a backward and stupid system. Capitalism is a contemptuous system. Capitalism is a system made on profit. It will make a commodity out of everything. It will take my mother and sell her on a slave block. It will make students acquire knowledge and make them sell their knowledge on the slave block to advance themselves rather than serving humanity. The struggle becomes especially crucial for African students. We say no individual African in this country makes any advance unless it is a result as mass struggle. Any student sitting in any seat in any college in America know that they didn't gain that seat through their own individual talents, but only through the struggles of the masses of their people. Thus, that seat belongs to the people. The knowledge they acquire there must be used for the people, otherwise they have already betrayed the people and have repeated errors.